Um, hello, this is, uh, I will be presenting today um, residence in an area called Dabouk, which is a suburb uh, located to the west of uh, Amman, it's uh, in Jordan. Uh, actually, the most challenging aspect of this project was its location due to the fact that uh, Dabouk is an expanding residential district um, that is aggressively transforming um, one of the few remaining oak habitats uh, uh, in Jordan into a dense affluent neighborhood. Uh, the regulations also seem to incrementally allow higher densities to occur on smaller and smaller lots of land, um, which is, uh, of course, aggravating the process of uh, tree cutting that is taking place uh, due to the ongoing uh, construction process. It's quite ironic, actually, that uh, the attraction of this area uh, is and has been its nature, yet in the absence, and I think complete absence, of serious and strict protection laws, uh, such nature is, uh, nature is being uh, completely eradicated. So this is the site. Uh, so obviously the intent was to develop the site uh, with the least possible damage. We wanted to somehow retain the character of the land as much as possible. Uh, the site is uh, a 2,000 square meter lot, and it is uh, accessed by one uh, small road uh, positioned to its western edge. It contains several mature oak trees uh, that are situated on a topography that uh, diagonally slopes 10 meters uh, from its southwestern to its uh, opposite north, northeastern uh, corner. Uh, the site has uh, building setbacks from all, side, uh, all sides, uh, height restrictions, uh, and an allowable uh, footprint of 20%. Um, the regulations, when combined with uh, the presence of the trees and the area requested uh, to accommodate the program, uh, left very little room uh, to maneuver in terms of the building footprint. Uh, so in a way, the location was predetermined by the restrictions. Early on, uh, we started this diagram, which is uh, one of um, uh, a centralized courtyard type, uh, which uh, has been diagonally divided to uh, provide a datum along which there is a sectional break that actually uh, lifts or uh, suspend, suspends one half of the building uh, above the landscape. Uh, by doing so, actually, we gained a smaller footprint of the building and we therefore expanded the garden. And uh, so that was basically was the intent. And uh, as a result, we also uh, defined a back uh, uh, exterior space, uh, which is uh, a double height space. And then the courtyard then is deflected towards the sky in the form of a large opening that allows the wind and air to filter through. Okay, following this diagram, the house, uh, following this diagram, the house consists of uh, four levels. Uh, the basement level basically is set against the topography, and from one side, and then from the street side, it is set against uh, a series of constructed um, uh, terraces. Uh, and in, by doing so, we actually completely conceal the basement, and uh, we so it is, it's, it's entirely invisible from the street. And basically, this is accessed by a side ramp uh, from the street and by the main vertical co circulation core. Of course, this space contains a lot of technical spaces in addition to uh, bedrooms, some bedrooms that are carved out into the landscape. Uh, the second floor, the ground floor basically, is, contains the main functions of the house and uh, uh, as you can see, it is uh, configured in an L shape, which defines the two sides of the back courtyard. 
and um, the, 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 the spaces of the interior actually were, uh, the scale was maintained um, uh, rather controlled in regard to the exterior, and this was done to give a contrast and to sort of uh, maintain the interior space as uh, domestic. Uh, above that level, there is uh, an intermediate terrace space that is uh, planted. It actually acts like a prosthetic extension of the garden from the back. And what it does basically is uh, um, uh, it sort of reclaims the, uh, the footprint of the house and reclaims sort of what we had used up in terms of covering the land. And uh, it contains two sheltered spaces at the corners where uh, the cantilever of the upper floor is um, uh, anchored into the ground floor. This is, this is also visible in terms of the sections below. Uh, the last floor is the bedroom floor, and it actually, uh, what it is is that it, it, uh, it's a suspended floor that uh, sort of uh, uh, creates and provides a shelter or ceiling for the space below. So it is the, the exterior space defined uh, through its roof, basically. Um, the slope, therefore, uh, it is visible in this uh, uh, image how the slope um, extends below the upper floor uh, towards the house, again expanding the actual feel and size of the, of the garden, which essentially creates this uh, outdoor uh, shaded hall defined by the architecture and la landscape in equal measures. Uh, this expressive part of the building is uh, is sort of introverted, is kept in, it's kept in from the view, and uh, it is intended to remain private. Uh, of course, uh, the space can be partially perceived from the various sides of the uh, site, and uh, here you see how the building actually is embedded within the landscape, and of course this uh, very much depends on one's uh, position within the topography, the topographic location, basically, of where you're seeing the building. Uh, this is in contrast to the street level, which, where we see the build-up of the landscape, the terraces, which are meant to be sort of densely planted to kind of uh, provide a buffer to the, um, to the building on one hand, and to uh, completely conceal the street from the uh, ground level, basically. So when one is in this garden, it's sort of connecting to the background, the middle ground sort of disappears. So there is this visual trick uh, that is impossible to do through photography because it's really densely planted, you don't see it. Um, uh, the elevation uh, from the opposite hill, basically, is uh, articulated uh, by a number of window fenestrations uh, or a patchwork that indicates, loosely indicates the very various programs occurring within the building. But um, the point of this image is to show how the, the, the building actually, or the space below, uh, behind the building, is completely flattened, and this uh, expression of the courtyard is sort of uh, diminished on the facade. And uh, so the idea or the intent here was to somehow maintain a relatively inconspicuous presence, uh, and I stress relatively. So um, this is the entry, actually the, the, the entry um, to the house. It is, uh, it is accessed, the, the ground level is accessed through a side stair that uh, crosses the terrace garden, and it actually allows one to um, access uh, the main front door of the house and the back courtyard. Uh, clearly, there is, a, uh, there is a, an, um, an investment in the structural uh, qualities of the building, and um, 
Um, and the, the, the potentials actually of the spatial potentials actually of the structure texture and it also refers somehow to a cross section of the Jordanian architecture which is typically could be characterized by its uh, material weight and heaviness. I mean we are mainly constructing in a very arid environment. There is a lot of uh, um, um, buildings that have this kind of solidity and so this is what the, the material is actually doing. Um, however, once the impression of the structure is desensitized, uh, the focus reshifts on other aspects of the space which I think are equally important. It is the garden, the presence of the water, it is the breeze, the, the, the light, the, 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 the scent of the garden as well. And so this is actually what gives the, the space its pulse, its uh, character and identity. Uh, this, this image is from the back garden and it actually shows the manner by which uh, the garden and the landscape um, are, in, are sort of internalized within the building and somehow that uh, uh, um, this landscape permeates it and permeates the structure in a, in a number of different ways. It goes underneath it, it goes through it, it becomes a roof garden. And so the, the, the object basically uh, becomes very much linked in or anchored in this uh, landscape. Uh, these two images show the connection from the back of uh, the garden to the top terrace and of course again here the, the terrace sort of reconnects the uh, uh, inhabitants to the, to, to the, to, to the uh, horizon. And uh, through that terrace, which is sort of an L-shaped kind of bridge, you can see also the gardens uh, through the building, the courtyard below. Um, at the edges, of course, there are uh, these spaces. One of them is an exterior living room, and it's, uh, this is where actually the structure is anchored. And the other one, basically, is a passage space through which you, uh, the, the garden is being fragmented and you're seeing it through uh, a series of windows. Um, uh, this, is a, this is a rendering, actually, of uh, how we intended to, the space to be. It was all rendered in one material. Again, this idea of um, uh, the space being carved and the continuity of the material. In this case, it was wood. Of course, you know, as we developed the, 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 the interiors, uh, uh, this was taken out due to the budget constraints. And uh, so this is the main space. It, it shows the qualities of uh, the... Uh, uh, the qualities and proportion of the space, the domesticity of the space, the way the windows, the patchwork of windows let the light in and so on. I apologize for not putting uh, images of the finished uh, interior because it's simply being worked on at the moment. Uh, I believe there are a couple of uh, images uh, on the website for reference. So thank you very much.